out noise. It's my son because he wants to blow the show far. But uh, I'm going to share my screen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I um I had an interesting uh, couple of days as I was preparing this lesson. Um, I was actually even before I started preparing the lesson, I was just telling Ty how I was in I was in bed and I heard it woke me up. I heard y'all tell me the end is near. And I know it was, I know it was him. So I said, okay, Father, I hear you. Um, I guess I know what I need to talk about for this uh, lesson. So that is what we're going to talk about. We're going to look at this time that we're living in. And we're going to uh, look at what some of the scriptures have to say about um what the future is going to be like. We're going to look at the book of Daniel, and we're also going to tie in some other passages. Um, one moment, I'm just waiting for my son to get the show far. Uh, and and, and uh, Lisa, if you have something that you want to share on the mic, I can, because I'm, I'm just waiting a minute for... Uh, well, this was just for Jessica when you were praying. Um, the scripture um, that came to me was, um, I'm sorry, in Isaiah 54 and 17, and no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. That, uh, that was for Jessica. Okay. Okay. Amen. Thank you, uh, Lisa. So, uh, Benji, come on. Benji wants to blow the show far, so I'm gonna let him blow it. Okay. Good job, Benji. Good job. So we can start. So far, have been blown. Uh, okay. So I, um, like I said, y'all yeah, was letting me know the end is near, and I had a dream. Um, the dream I had, I saw. This was actually last week, but I didn't talk about it. Think because I forgot to talk about it, but I'm glad I didn't talk about it because it goes with what I believe he wants us to talk about today. So I had this dream. I was downtown. Some I don't know what city I was in, but I was downtown and I'm looking at all the skyscrapers and I felt like there was someone with me. I don't know if it was an angel or what. But I'm just looking, and then all of a sudden, I saw this fire come out the air. It just was blown towards a skyscraper, kind of like this picture. I think this is the World Trade Center. But this fire came, if you think of like a blowtorch coming from the sky, and the flames just engulfed the whole building. Then the next thing, I know all of the skyscrapers are in flames. And it's kind of terrifying because it, you know, it felt kind of real, the dream. And then out of nowhere, as I'm watching, I wasn't afraid, but it's just kind of, you know, when you see all these bad things happen, you feel bad for all the other people. I, I felt like I was protected, but I'm like, man, this is really bad. Then the next thing I know, I hear the sound, and it was so, so loud. And the sound 
it was real. It, it was like a real, I felt like I really heard the sound because after I heard the sound, I woke up and I was looking outside my window, like, did, you know, is, is this, did something happen? <laughs> like, that's how, how real it felt. Sounded like, I don't know if it was like a gong or some really loud, it's just a loud bang loudest sound i ever heard kind of remind me like in texas when we have these bad storms it's like some of the loudest thunder i've ever heard like when i lived in ohio i didn't hear thunder like i hear here when i lived in uh, seattle and washington i didn't hear it like that there either but here's some very very loud <laughs> very loud thunder it's like it shakes like an earthquake sometimes it was similar to that but much louder. And so I woke up thinking, okay, Yah is trying to let me know something. We need to get prepared. That was last week. But two days ago, he woke me up. He said the end is near. So that's why we're going to focus on these scriptures that we're going to focus on today. Um, now, with all that being said, Isaiah 26, verse 3, it says, let's keep this in mind, because we don't want to walk in fear. It says, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. So many people, they, they quote this verse, but they forget the last part. The reason that we can be in perfect peace the reason our mind is stayed on thee is because we trust in Yah. So we put our trust in Yah, and because we put our trust in Yah, we are we we are focused on what He says, as opposed to what is happening, what we see happening, what the world is saying, what is happening in the news, what's happening in our jobs, even what's happening in our own health. Because of we we focus on His word, He says He will keep us in perfect peace. And as most of us know, peace is shalom. And shalom is not peace as in like war and peace, where it's just a time of rest from time of war. And, you know, shalom is much more than, than the English type of peace, the, West, the Western type of peace. Shalom encompasses everything. Shalom will encompass your, your health, it will encompass your mind. It will encompass your your spiritual well being. It will encompass also. Uh, it also encompasses things as as in war and peace as well. But shalom is it passes understanding. It's something only that Yah can provide. It's supernatural, and so that's what Yah gives us when our mind is. Stayed on me. That what that mean? That means that we're meditating on Him. It's an everyday thing, just like Psalm one says, "Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seat of the scornful." It says that His delight is in the law of the Lord, and He meditates on it day and night. This is the person that has perfect peace when our minds are meditating on Him. That type of person can also trust. In him, as we talked about faith, can have a munah. We can have a munah because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yah. So the more word we have, the more we're meditating on Yah's word, the more at peace we're going to be, no matter what happens. So we can keep that scripture in mind as we are discussing some of these uh, topics. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to read Enoch chapter one, which is it's only like 12 verses. So it's not very long. But I want you to see perhaps some scriptures maybe that you've never seen before because they're relevant for today. Uh, and we're going to go to Enoch a few times uh, throughout this. So Enoch one verses verse one. And, re and also before I read it, remember Enoch is one of these uh, books that most people don't read, 
but it's actually quoted in the scriptures. This is a very important book. So verse one says, the words of the blessing of Enoch wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous. Now remember the elect, we discussed this a few months ago. We asked ourselves, who is the elect? And we saw in that, in that Bible study, the elect is Israel. The elect is Jacob. We look over and over again at various times. The scriptures refers to the elect. And it says, my elect, Israel, my elect, Jacob. That's who the elect are. So it says the elect and righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. So. This is this book, I believe, is for us. It's an old book. Before the book of Genesis, because Enoch was before Moses lived. Moses was the author of Genesis, but Enoch lived before him. So you read Enoch, and it's so relevant for today. But the first verse, it says, the words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation. So right now we're living in the day of tribulation. We will be, I believe very shortly, in a time of great tribulation. Great tribulation. And it says, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. So this has happened before during the time of Noah. Remember, all the wicked, all the godless were removed except for Noah. Well, this is going to happen again. All the wicked, all the godless are going to be removed. This is why I think this is very, uh, it's very important that we, we read this. Because Enoch was writing this for us. Even more so than for the time of Noah, it's written even more so for us. Okay, verse 2 says, And he took up this parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God, and saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angel showed me. And from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one which is for to come talking about us remember Enoch it says he was a righteous man his eyes were open so he saw visions from the holy ones angels angels were showing him and revealing to him secrets because of his lifestyle he was holy um so you remember y'all took him and he was not that means he was he was just gone so verse three it says concerning the elect I said and took up my parable concerning them. The Holy Great One will come forth from his dwelling. See, this, this is how we also know this is talking about the future. Because it says, and the eternal God will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sai, and appear from his camp, and appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens. This is not when, talking about when Yahushua came the first time talking about when he's coming the second time. See, the, the second time when he comes, he's not going to come as this humble servant. He's going to come with strength and might. He's going to come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. It says, and all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake. Who are the watchers? The watchers, if you don't know, are the sons of God who came and to the daughters of men that we read about in Genesis chapter 6. So Enoch will use this word watchers a lot. And that's who it's talking about when it's talking about the watchers. So it says, all shall be smitten with fear and the watchers shall quake. And great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth. Okay, and it says, and the high mountain shall be shaken, and the high hill shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. We heard that before, 
We've talked about that scripture many times. Well, it's also in the book of Enoch. And, and possibly when Isaiah was quoting this, it, he was getting it from me, the book of Enoch. So Enoch was before Isaiah. I, I believe it's in Isaiah. It's Isaiah or Zechariah, where he says that the mountains are going to be shaken, the hills are going to be made low, and that they're going to melt like wax at the return of the Most High when he comes back. Verse 7 says, And the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish, and there shall be a judgment upon all men. So before I go to the next part, I want to, I want to go to Genesis. Do I have it here? I want to I want to read Genesis 6 for a moment just so we can see the connection of what he was talking about for those of you that might not know. So Genesis 6, verse 1, says, And it came to pass when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto men, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose, chose. So those watchers we were reading about, that the book of Enoch talks about, these are the sons of God, which in Hebrew is the benign Elohim. They saw the daughters of Adam, the daughters of men. See, it's making a distinction between the sons of God and the daughters of men because the sons of God are not men. They're angels. So they saw that they were fair. It took wise all that they chose. And Yahuwah said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that. He also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. This is the Hebrew word Nephilim. And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men and they bare them children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. So these Nephilim, Nephilim in the Hebrew, let me show you, it means. The fallen ones. So, so daughters of men they bear. Where is it at? I, I must have just passed it. Um, giants. Here it is. So, the root word here is nafal. Nafal means fallen, but the plural is Nephilim, Nephilim. So these were the offspring of these daughters of men and these watchers or angels. And if you think about it, what are the angels' jobs? The angels' jobs are to be ministering spirits unto the heirs of salvation. They're watching over us, watchers. So that's, that's uh, kind of why you see that word watchers. This is why I was praying earlier that we that y'all would send the angels to help us in our situations because that's their job. And so we want to ask y'all to, you know, incorporate them in what he's doing. So I, I just want you to be aware of that. So let me go back to the uh, to the scripture here. It says. Let me highlight this verse seven. It says, and there shall be a judgment upon all men. So there's going to be a judgment. But with the righteous, he will make peace. He's going to make shalom. So this is going to be this time that's coming. There's going to be a day of judgment. It's not going to be a pleasant day for, for most. But it doesn't have to be. There's also going to be, it's also going to be a time of peace that he's going to make with the righteous. So you basically can choose what side you want to be a part of. Do you want to be a part of the side that's going to face all the wrath of the most high? Or do you want to be a part of the side that's going to uh, be with the righteous where he makes peace? It says, and, and we'll protect the elect and mercy shall be upon them and they shall be all belong to Elohim. 
and they shall be prospered and they shall all be blessed and he will help them all and light shall appear unto them and he will make peace with them and behold he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly so this is a scripture that sometimes you read he's coming with ten thousands this is where, where it comes from. It comes from, that's in the book of Jude as well, comes from Enoch. When it says he's coming with tens of thousands of his holy ones, it's the Kadoshim. I mean, he's coming with his tens of thousands of his angels. And to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness, which they have ungodly committed, and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This is exactly what the book of Jude is quoting from. Okay, so we're going to be coming back to Enoch, but I just want you to understand there's this judgment that's coming. Now, there was something that, something that I read. Um, was it here? In verse, I'm not seeing it, but but that's okay. So when this occurs in the righteous, he's going to make peace with the righteous. Isaiah talks about this time as well, and there's going to be a group of people which are the righteous that are going to be hidden during this time period so isaiah 26 19 to 21 it says thy dead men shall live this is talking about the resurrection see when the day of yah comes that's when the resurrection happens remember the dead in christ shall arise first then we who are alive and remain shall meet him to be caught in the air so at the day of yah this is when this period of time that Isaiah is talking about. It says, thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead. See, the earth is going to give up the dead. The sea is going to give up its dead. No longer is it going to be hidden anymore. Come my people. Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy door about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So Yah's people, Israel, those that graft themselves in, that, that, that are grafted into Israel as well. He's given us an instruction. He's saying, hide yourself for a moment. There's going to, we're going to have to know how to hide ourselves. There's a part that we have to play. Yah is going to do his part, but we have to do our part as well. So he says, come my people, hide in, or come and enter into thy chambers, shut the door about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, Yah cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So as I'm reading this, and I know judgment is coming, Enoch has told us that. Now Isaiah is telling us the same thing. We need to know how to hide ourselves. This is what's most important. If we don't know how to hide ourselves, then we are going to face this punishment. We're going to experience it. In fact, I know most of you know this, but we're going to read Psalm 91. It says, 
he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty we got to find the secret place and we got to know how to get to the secret place right now we should know we should be in our secret place right now this it should be a familiar place for us the secret place it should be very familiar because there's going to be a time when it's going to be necessary for us to be in that place it's going to be a requirement because if you don't find that secret place then you're not going to be under the shadow of the almighty and under the shadow of the almighty is that where you find the almighty's protection so this is this is preparation for what's coming so david said i will say of yahuwah i will say of yah he is my refuge and my fortress my elohim my god in him will i trust see remember the first scripture we we read today it was he will keep the in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he put his trust in him so i don't know if i'm saying that right what it, what is it again oh, because he trusteth in thee that's what it says so he's our refuge and our, he's our fortress because we put our trust in him surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence so we we got a taste of what pestilence can be like with covid but there's far greater pestilence that's coming much far, far greater but it's only in yah only he is going to be the one that's going to be able to deliver us from what's coming so we got to find this secret place we have to find our refuge we need to have so we need to be so in tune with yah that we we hear his voice. We know what to do. We know where to go. We were. We know where not to go. We know what uh, where not to be. We know uh, what not to buy and what to buy. Because the enemy is causing all types of deception right now. He's causing all types of things. Actually, let me share something with you. Some of you, I think I shared this with you earlier you know how we've been talking about uh forever chemicals um i shared this video earlier with a few with a few people uh but basically in this video katie Couric, she's interviewing this guy who has just sued 3M. 3M is a company, they make post-its, but they make a whole lot more than just post-its. They have placed, um, or I should say, they've made these chemicals that are for like water repellent for all different types of uh, products all around the world. And these chemicals they have forever, they have they're forever at forever chemicals. And he sued them for $10 billion last month because these chemicals are now in our bloodstream. All around the world, and I, I'm gonna see if I can find this R article, but all around the world. They have proven that this forever chemical that the company 3M has created is going into all of our water systems everywhere. You know, they're called forever chemicals. So it's very hard to get rid of them. They last for, for a very long time. That's why they call them forever. And so 3M knew in the 70s that their chemicals were causing contamination wherever they had their products but they didn't do anything about it they kept allowing these products to be 
developed and created and sold all around the world. And so now these chemicals are all in our water systems. So it says 3M has reached a $10.3 billion settle settlement with a host of U.S. public water systems to resolve water pollution claims tied to Forever Chemicals, the chemical company announced on Thursday. This is the largest water uh, settlement, the lar largest drinking water sell settlement in American history. Um, and now the problem with these substances and their chemicals is that they cause all kinds of diseases. There's many types of cancers, as you can see right here, that have been linked to these products, these, these chemicals that they have made. <laughs> and so now this is only the first set of, of lawsuits that have come in. And these, this money is going to primarily go to the water utilities to help them come up with ways to filter out these chemicals. The next wave of lawsuits that are coming are going to be from individuals who have cancer or who have all different types of uh, diseases that these chemicals, that they've proven these chemicals cause. And so... 90, like I said, 98% of the world has these chemicals in their body, in their bloodstream. So when you drink water, because it's in our water, when you drink the water, that's how it gets in your bloodstream. Um, and how does it get in the water? It gets in the water because this stuff is everywhere. In our packaging, like, for example, when you buy go to like McDonald's, which I don't go to anymore, but if you go to places like McDonald's and you get the wrapping that the hamburgers are in, you know, sometimes you notice the wrapping is kind of glossy or has some kind of coating on it. That's the chemical that this company makes. And that's in, that's in the, it's in all the food packaging or not all the food patch packaging, but much of the food packaging that we have today in our stores and when you go to restaurants and fast food places when you when you get a pizza box it was the chemicals that they made that they put in our food uh food packaging and then when that packaging is disposed of and it gets broken up uh, goes into the landfills and then all of that trash eventually the remnants of that trash goes down into the aquifers that, get, that gets into our water and it gets contaminated that way. So then that's when, when you drink the water that's coming from the ground, that's getting in all over the place. That's how it's getting to us. Now, while I'm bringing all this up, I'm bringing all, all this up for twofold. I want you to know about it because we were talking about this. And now just recently we're seeing this lawsuit. Many people are going to be suing. But secondly, I just want you to see the level of deception, the level of um, destruction that has been done on this planet and on this earth so that when you read, or you're going to see all the things that are going to happen, the judgment that's coming, how severe the most high, how, hard, how, how destructive it's going to be, you're going to understand why. It's not just some people have just simply disobeyed some of y'all's commandments. No, the the evil things that have been done on this planet, it is, is mind-boggling. What people will do for money is mind-boggling. The things that people will go through. Through. And this is just one of millions of examples. But let's go back to the scriptures. By the way, like I always say, if y'all have a question or comment, let me know. Um, but so, yes, greed, exactly. Exactly. 
Um, so I'm sorry for those of you two that are on YouTube. If any of you are on YouTube, I'm sorry. Next time I have my screen so I can respond if you're talking right now, I apologize. So, so this, um, there's one more point I wanted to, to make about this. Oh, that's right. We were in Psalm 91. Let me go back to Psalm 91. So, so surely he'll deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You know, I'm looking at this in a whole new way. When it says he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence, you know how he's going to do that? By us being in the secret place. That's how he's going to do that. Because right now, it's almost impossible to avoid, avoid all of the different things that are in this earth because we're living in Babylon. So we're dealing with all of these different toxic things, whether it's TV, whether it's the schools we go to, whether it's the food we're eating or the, or the water we're drinking, it's just toxic. And so we literally have to come out of Babylon. You know, we've been talking about money and my goal was to finish the money thing. You know how we've been talking about money. Should we work for money? I've really been enjoying that series. But yeah, he, he told me I had to transition to this. So, but in order for us to, to really come out of this system, we have to change the way we think. We really have to make him our refuge. We have to, we have to make him our dwelling place. He's got to be our habitation. And we got to be his habitation. We need to dwell with him and he needs to dwell with us. That means constant communication. So he says in verse five, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day. There's war coming. You know, David was a prophet too. There's war coming. And we're, we're dealing with pestilences, but we're also going to have Arrows that are going to be flying by night. We're also having spiritual arrows, spiritual attacks. Because, you know, we really, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So there's also some spiritual war that's going on. And spiritual war is actually way more real than even this physical stuff that's going on. And we're going to see that as we read the book of Enoch. Enoch lays it all out. So does Jubilees. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou see the reward of the wicked. See, when Yahuwah comes, he's going to give the wicked their reward for all of these things they've been doing, poisoning us, all these cancers that have been coming, all these diseases. We wondering like, why is there such an increase of all these diseases and heart disease and diabetes and all of these things that we never dealt with, you know, in the past, at least not to this level it's because the enemy and we're going to see these angels they had a big role to play in all of this and the angels see the angels have a seed remember the nephilim the giants we're going to we're going to if we have time we're going to get through all of this there shall no evil before thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling you know the uh these companies like the wef and the un and the World Health Organization, uh, you know, they're already planning for another pandemic. They're, they're planning for one right now. Um, these elitist governments, they're talking as if they expect one to happen soon. So don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when another one comes. Because another one is coming. So don't be surprised. But the scriptures are telling us these these pestilences as they come how are we going to avoid all this he has to be our dwelling he has to be our dwelling place he has to be our habitation for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone this is why i'm asking the angels help us help us you know we're ask, asking the Father, send your angels to assist us. 
That's that's what they do. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my Yahusha, my salvation? Okay, so this he, he's going to hide some of us. So we need to know we, we got to hide ourselves. Okay. Uh, so. So. Um, let's go back. Let's go back to. Uh, Revelation now. I actually let, let me think before we go to Revelation. I think now I want to get into Daniel. I want to get into Daniel and then we'll come back to come back to Revelation. So now I want to kind of pivot because we're talking about these end times. I want us to see in Daniel chapter two, we're going to look at the, the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And we're going to we're going to focus on one aspect of this statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about, the one that deals with today. But first, I want you to see a, a rendering of the statue, Daniel 2, 32 to 33. It says the image of the head was fine gold, the chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. So Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon during the time of Daniel, the earlier early part of Daniel's life, he had this dream, gold, silver, uh, bronze, and iron, and then also iron mixed with clay. So let's look at these, at these in a little bit more detail. So the first kingdom is talked about in Daniel chapter 2, verse 36, 38. Daniel 2, it says, this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. So, so what Nebuchadnezzar dreamed, if you remember the story, I'm not going to read the whole thing for the sake of time, but if you remember the story, Nebuchadnezzar, at, when he had the dream, he... Uh, he, he asked for all the wise men and magicians, anyone that should be able to uh, interpret a dream in Babylon, he asked that they all come. But no one was able to interpret the dream except for Daniel. But now Daniel's given the interpretation of that dream. So that's what we're reading right now. So Daniel says, thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven have given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given unto thine hand and have made thee rule over them all. So Babylon, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, he was ruling over ever, everybody. That means he, he had the world empire at that point. He had the largest amount of territory that and he was in control of the largest amount of territory at that time even over the territory of Israel. He says, thou art this head of gold. Gold. So this gold that is the head that Nebuchadne Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about, that is ne that's, that's Nebuchadnezzar and that's his kingdom. Okay. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a chart I got from useful charts he has a good uh, youtube channel well, i bought one of his books and it has all of these uh, timelines and charts and graphs which i really enjoy and when you get to uh, babylon babylon is the chaldean empire so i took a picture of this these different empires so Assyria was the world empire before Babylon. 
And if you remember, Israel was held captive by Assyria. But Assyria was conquered by Babylon. So the Chaldean, that, that's the known also as the Chaldean Empire. Okay. So first you have Nabopolassar. He was the king of Babylon. And his son, Nebuchadnezzar II, comes into power next. This is the king we're reading about, uh, approximately 605 to 562 BC. So this is the time when Daniel was living. During the time of Nebuchadnezzar, that's also when Judah fell. So, so, um, Just, I just want you to have a little bit of understanding of this empire. Sometimes you'll see it as the Chaldean Empire. So we know the first, the first thing is Babylon. The next, the next scripture we have, I mean, it says in the next verse 39, it says, and after all these shall arise another king inferior to thee. So the, the next kingdom is the medial medo persian empire and it's the silver so the silver which is like the chest area and the arms that's the silver that nebuchadnezzar saw it's the medo persian empire so medo meaning like medes and of course persia being persia which is kind of in the area where Iran is at. But it was not, it did not have the same level of authority and influence and power as Babylon because it's inferior. Um, the Medo Persian Empire is where you have, it's called the Arkham, Ar, I'm sorry, was that, how do you pronounce that? Achaemenid? Akim, Dynasty, dynasty. Sometimes you'll see that. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Akamanid. I think that's how you say that. I'm not sure. But so you see Cyrus and uh, Cyrus the Great, Darius, Xerxes. These are all people that uh, you read about in the scriptures. They they were in power, and you read about how they would come into rule during the time of Daniel. Daniel prophesied that these rulers, such as Cyrus, was going to come into power. He prophesied actually that Cyrus was going to be king, and it mentions Cyrus' name before Cyrus was even born. So that's just showing you Daniel, he was a powerful prophet. Daniel's naming people and kings. In fact, many of the scholars have a hard time with Daniel because they think, oh, no, it's not possible that Daniel was written uh, at the time that most people say it was written because he's mentioning Cyrus's name. No, it, that, that's not the case. It, it was written during the time of Daniel. Daniel was just a prophet. So anyway, I'm not going to talk about all that today. We can do that another time. But. This is some of the names you'll see of Persia. You see Cyrus, Darius, Xerxes, Artaxerxes. And so Persia, uh, the uh, Medes and the Persians, this is a great empire as well. Uh, we're going to look at one of the maps. So this is the extent of the Persian Empire at its fullest uh, power you know they they had power in africa over parts of libya and egypt all of this area of the middle east large uh, portions of central asia europe so that's that's the silver next you have the grecian empire it says in another kingdom of brass which shall rule bear bear rule over all the earth so Greece then conquered the Medo-Persian Empire, okay? 
So these are some of the uh, rulers during the time of Greece. See, Persia, it ended with Alexander the Great. Maybe many of you have heard about Alexander the Great. We, we learned about him in history class, but he's talked, Daniel, when he's, when he's referring to the third, um, the, the third uh, garment on the statue is talking about Alexander, uh, I'm sorry, not the third, I'm, I'm getting mixed up. The second empire is the Medo-Persians, which Ale Alexander was ruling then. But after that, then we, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm getting mixed up. Alexander is a ruler over Greece. <laughs> so that's the Argia dynasty. I'm sorry. So he was the, one of the rulers over Greece. And then his kingdom was divided by his sons. Okay. So you have four rulers here. His empire was divided. And some of these that you'll read about, Ptolemy and Seleucus, actually we're going to look at, at, at a map where they were to see the amount of area that they were in control of. So after, after Persia falls, then you have Alexander. So he's the bronze. that Daniel saw. Um, the next, we have this uh, map showing the, the Ptolemaic kingdom and the Seleucid kingdom. Uh, see, they encompass a large area. It's the area that Greece was ruling over. They had control over Africa as well the Sinai, the modern Israel, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Asia, por portions of Europe, Italy. So another large area. If you notice too, all of these nations that are conquering each other, They had some role in Israel's history. So either they were in captivity, such as in the nation of Babylon, or the area of Israel was conquered by them. So they were, they were ruled by that area. Or they were made slaves, in the case of the Greeks. Then now what we're going to focus on for just a little bit of time I might not be able to finish, but this is what I want to focus on, the fourth kingdom. Daniel 20, 40 to 43 it says, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. Remember, remember this iron, because we're going to see this a few times. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Okay, so there's a lot here. Let's look at this first verse. The fourth kingdom that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about is going to be a world empire. It's strong as iron. And it breaks in pieces. It breaketh. What it means, what it says that is that whatever the iron touches, it breaks. And we know it's a kingdom. So this kingdom that touches other nations and other kingdoms, when the hammer comes down, those nations, they get broken in 
to pieces. It says, as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. So not only is it going to break these pieces up, these kingdoms up, and these nations up, it's going to bruise those nations. They're going to feel it afterwards. And they're going to have something left over to let you know that this, that we were here. Yeah, it does sound like the USA. It's, it's, you're going to see USC is a, USA is a part of all of this. We're going to get to that. It says, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron. So remember, not only did he see the Nebuchadnezzar, he saw the iron legs here, but also the feet, which was part iron and clay. This iron that this that means this iron and the clay, which is on the feet, it's part of, it's connected to this iron. But you'll see that in some of the following verses more, even more clearly, it's going to say it. So, so it says, where else it saw the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. So it's going to be divided at some point. Um, and it was divided. If you remember the Roman Empire, there was a eastern part of Rome of the Roman Empire, and there was a western part of the Roman Empire. The eastern part of the Roman Empire became known as the Byzantine Empire. That's when Constantine was in rule. That's when Christianity spread all around the world. So let's see. So as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the king kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Now, this is the part I, I didn't notice till just a week or two ago. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Okay. I saw this. And I've been reading this for years, but something jumped out at me this last time I read this verse. I want to look at this verse in the Blue Letter Bible so we can look at it in the Hebrew. I want you to see what I saw. This tripped me out. Okay, so Daniel 2.43, we're going to look, look, at, look at the Hebrew. So it says, oops, sorry about that. It says, uh, whereas thou sawest iron mixed. Okay, let's look at this word. This first word is arab. Arab is the word for mix or Arab. Arab, Arab. So this word is is like I believe similar to like what you see when you see the mixed multitude. Remember the children of Israel when they left? Yes, because this is this is the root of that word, Arab. Arab. So, all right, so let's go back. It says the iron is going to Arab, it's, it's going to mix with miry clay. So, iron has got metal, and then you got clay mixing together. And they shall. Who is they? That's the question. They shall, it's talking about people, because now it's they. Arab, mingle themselves, mix themselves with the seed, Zara, Zara is the seed, or children 
of men. Aish, Anish. Now, I said, whoa. So, the clay is going to mix with the seed of men. I'm sorry, the iron is going to mix with the seed of men, the clay and the iron. I said, hold on. This kind of sounds like it's not men <laughs> that's mixing with men. Like it's making a distinction. Like the clay and the men maybe are two different things. It says, but they shall not cleave. Debak. Let's keep going. So debak, this is the same word cleave that you see in see um in uh Genesis. So we got to go to the root. The root is the same word, the box, same Hebrew letters. It's the same word you see in Genesis chapter 2. Therefore, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh, join with each other, become one flesh. So cleaving, cleaving can occur in other kinds of ways too. It's just a matter of joining, becoming one. So let's go back. So now let's read this again with that understanding. It says, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with clay. Now we know that these different metals, the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, they all represent different kingdoms. So the iron is a kingdom. But the iron is going to mix with miry clay. The first time we see something that's not a metal, it's going to mingle or mix a rob with the seed or the children of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Because, you know, if you imagine you have some iron, you have some clay, you, you, you put those things together, they're not going to stick to each other. I mean, they may temporarily, but eventually that iron is going to fall off because they're not meant to be joined together. And this is what Daniel said was going to happen when the fourth kingdom comes into power. Now I want to read you. Um, I want to read you something from Luke. Luke 17, 26, 31. It says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the son of man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff shall be in, in the house let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Remember, we're talking about that in a whole nother context. Now we're looking at it in the context of the day of Yah. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed, and one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Why does it say that? 
the eagles going to be gathered together because the day of Yah is going to happen. The day of Yah is when Yah brings his judgment on this earth. Just as we read in the beginning of Enoch chapter one, when that judgment comes and there's destruction and the people are going to be judged, what is going to be left? Bodies for the birds to eat. Just like there's going to be a wedding supper of the lamb, there's also going to be a supper for the animals. That's in Matthew, Matthew 24. Yahushua talks about the supper of these animals, these birds, these vultures. I believe that's why they were created. But what I want to point out, we're going to stay here for a little bit. Because I want to have conversation if something comes to people's mind. But he said it's going to be like the days of Noah. Days of Noah. The first thing we read about in Genesis 6, the days of Noah, we know it was very wicked. But we also know that there was a group of uh, beings <laughs> that were mixing, mingling with the daughters of men. We just read in the fourth kingdom, it's going to be this clay mixed with iron. They're going to mingle themselves with the seed of men. I want to read one more thing. One more thing. This, what I'm about to read in Enoch. We're going to tie this all together. So we already read chapter one. We're going to read a few more verses. It says, Observe ye everything that taketh place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in heaven. Remember we're talking about wandering stars? The stars, they do what they're supposed to do. The sun and the moon, they do what they're supposed to do, except for a few of them, these wandering stars. How they all rise and set in order each in its season and transgress not their appointed order. Behold ye the earth and give heed of the things which take place upon it from first to last. How steadfast they are. How none of the things upon the earth change. But all the works of God appear to you. See, nature is doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be doing. The people that are messing up is us human beings and the angels that that fell it says behold the summer and the winter how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds and dew and rain lieth upon it chapter three observe and see how in the winter all the trees seem as though they had withered and shed all their leaves except 14 trees which do not lose their foliage but retain the old, old foliage from two to three years till the new one comes evergreen trees chapter four and again, observe ye the days of summer, how the sun is above the earth over against it, and you seek shade and shelter by reason of the heart of the sun, and the earth also burns with growing heat, so you cannot tread on the earth or on rock by reason of its heat. Observe ye how the trees cover themselves with green leaves and bear fruit, wherefore give ye heed, and know with regard to all his works, and recognize how he that liveth forever have made them so. See, Enoch is trying to let us know that the earth is doing what it's supposed to do. Winter comes when it's supposed to. Sun comes when it's supposed to. The leaves of the trees, they bear their fruit in their season when they're supposed to. And in, in the summer, the heat, it comes when it's supposed to. The cold, it comes when it's supposed to in its proper order, in its proper season. This, he's trying to get this point. And all his works go on thus from year to year forever and all the tasks which they accomplished for him and their tasks change not. But according as Elohim have ordained, so is it done. It does what it's supposed to do. And behold how the sea and the rivers in like manner accomplish and change not their tasks from his commandments. But we have a big problem keeping his commandments. But nature, it does what it's supposed to do. We can learn something from nature especially when it comes to this homosexual such sexuality and this, this transgenderism and all this let we could learn something from nature but ye have not seen i'm sorry but ye 
ye have not been steadfast, nor done the commandments of Yah, but ye have turned away and spoken proud and hard words with your impure mouths against his greatness. O ye hard-hearted, ye shall find no peace. Therefore shall ye execrate your days, and the years of your life shall perish, and the years of your destruction shall be multiplied in eternal execration, and ye shall find no mercy. In those days ye shall make your names an eternal execration unto all the righteous, and by you shall all who curse, curse, and all the sinners and godless shall imprecate by you, and for you, the godless, there shall be a curse, and all the shall rejoice, and all, I'm sorry, and there shall be forgiveness of sins, and every mercy, and peace, and forbearance, and there shall be salvation unto them, a goodly light, and for all of you sinners, there shall be no salvation, but on, on you all shall abide a curse, but for the elect, there shall be light, and joy, and peace, and they shall inherit the earth. See, the righteous, the elect, Israel, the earth belongs to earth. I mean, the earth belongs to us, not the earth belongs to earth. It belongs to us. Psalm says the earth he has given to the children. The meek shall inherit the earth, is what he said on the Ser Sermon of the Mount. So, Enoch is saying the same thing. And there, right, see, right now, Edom is in rule, rulership of this earth right now. Edom, Edom is in control. But that time is coming to an end shortly. Verse 9, it says, I'm sorry, verse uh, 8. And there shall be bestowed upon the elect wisdom. See, how are the elect going to get wisdom? The elect are going to get wisdom because of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Yah. The Spirit of Yah is the Spirit of wisdom. He's going to pour out his Spirit on all flesh, all flesh. Remember the new covenant. He said, uh, no longer uh, am I going to write on tablets of stone, but I'm going to write my law on their hearts. That Spirit of that spirit of wisdom is going to be written all over us by way of the spirit. So the elect are going to get that wisdom. And they shall live and never again sin. See, this is what's happening in the future. This is why I'm saying Enoch is for us now. It's giving us hope. It's giving us instructions. It's giving us something forward to look, look to. It says we're, we're going to live. We ain't ever going to have to worry about sin again. Either, either through ungodliness or through pride. But they who are wise shall be humble. See, pride, you know, sin became came because of uh, pride, or I should say Satan's fall became came because of pride. And we're not going to have to worry about that anymore. We're not going to have to worry about being puffed up. And therefore, since we're puffed up, we have a proclivity to sin. We're not going to sin because of ungodliness either. Verse 9, it says, they, they shall not again transgress, nor shall they sin all the days of their life, nor shall they die of the divine anger or wrath. See, Yah's anger and wrath is not going to be on us anymore for us to die anymore. But they shall complete the number of the days of their life, and their lives shall be increased in peace, and the years of their joy shall be multiplied in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their life. So it's saying your life is not going to be cut short no more, no longer. Is the life going to get cut short? You're going to be living eternally. Okay, next, I'm almost there to, to where I want to be. Verse or chapter six, and it shall come to pass when the children of men have multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful, comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven saw and lusted after them. And said to one another, come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Simajaza, or Simjaza 
who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a, of a great sin. See, this is a conversation. This is why in the book of Genesis, when you see it talking about the sons of God and the Nephilim, and also in the book of Jude, when it's talking about the angels that, that left their, their first estate, you know, the reason they didn't have to write so much about the details of all of this is because they already understood all the details of what happened because they had the book of Enoch and they had the book of Jubilees and they had the book of Jasher and they had other books like the book of Esdras. They had other books in the Apocrypha. Uh, oh, Enoch didn't have books in the Apoc Apocrypha, but I'm saying the, the prophets and also the apostles. They had those books, so they already knew the story of what happened. So now we're getting the details because now we're reading. So Simjaza, who was one of these angels that disobeyed, he was afraid. He did not want to do this. He said, I, I fear that if we come into these daughters of men, if we, we uh, uh, have intercourse with them, Y'all going to have me do this. Y'all going to let me and I'm going to pay the penalty for this. But verse four says, and they all answered him and said, let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. You know, they all said these these angels that fell. They all said, you know what? We're all going to do this. They bound themselves by an oath. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it and they were in all 200 200 of them did this we even have a number how many who descended in the days of jared on the summit of mount hermon and they called it mount hermon you read about jared if you read the gene genealogy of noah you'll see jared and you'll see that he came before him it says uh, in verse 7, and these are the names of their leaders. I do not know how to pronounce these. Semiazaz, their leader, leader, Arakiba, Ramil, Kokobiel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Daniel, Ezekiel, Barakajal, Asael, Aramos, Batril, Ananel, Zikiel, Samsapel, Zacharel, Cheril, Jamjael, Sariel. These are their chiefs of tens. Now, I'm a, coming back to this, but I want, I want you to see something. When we see these word chief, um, this is going to help you understand a little bit about principalities. So, for example, in Daniel 10, it says, Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee, and now I would return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. Then I will show thee, which is noted in the scripture of truth, that there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. So Michael, which is one of the angels, he is called a prince. And but there's also a prince of Persia. Also, there is a prince of Greece. It's a prince of all the nations. These prince are spiritual beings that have been given authority over a certain region or area. Um, you can see also when we read about the Prince of Persia in Daniel 10, verse 13, remember Daniel prayed. And so this is what Michael said. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just read it real, real fast. It says, verse 1. 
In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, remember we read about Cyrus. We saw that he was one of those kings of Persia that he conquered Babylon. A thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar was also on that list as one of the kings. All of this is in history. You can look all this up in Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, you can look at the World History Encyclopedias. Look at all of them. These are names that are in our history books in world history. It says, but the time, it says, I'm sorry, who, whose name was Belshazzar, and the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understood the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all. So three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the fourth and 20th day, on the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedeko, then I lifted up my eyes and, and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were gird, gird, girded with fine gold of Euphos. His body also was like beryl, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like the color of uh, polished brash and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude and i daniel saw the vision for the men that were with me saw not the vision but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves therefore i was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my comeliness was turned into corruption and i retained no strength yet i heard the voice of this words when I heard the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep on my face, and my face fell toward the ground. Um, let me skip to this part. It says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, from, from the first day till thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of Persia, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, withstood me one in 20 days but lo michael one of the chief princes came to help me and i remained there with the king the kings of persia so this is just showing there are there are princes we saw we, we saw about the prince of greece and the prince of persia but this prince of persia came to withstand Michael's, I'm sorry, Daniel's prayer. And so we also see a similar thing with Jacob. Remember Jacob's ladder. He prayed, and for 21 days, his prayer was being withheld. But Michael, who is one of the chief princes, and he's a chief prince over Israel, he watches over Israel. He helped. Michael was a powerful powerful guy. He's a, well, you see Michael all over the scriptures. He's one of the top leaders and chief princes. You know, these other, other princes don't really stand a chance when he gets involved. You see, Michael's the one that casts Satan out of heaven. So when we pray, sometimes there are principalities and rulers that are trying to withhold our prayers. This is why we need to keep praying and be persistent. This is why you, you, you saw that he fasted when he prayed because sometimes them demons, sometimes those principalities, sometimes those rulers, they see what's coming to help us and they, they don't want that to happen. So I'm only sh I'm sh showing all this because I want you to understand when you see in Enoch, these are the chiefs of tens. These are rulers, angels. That came into uh, these angels, they had a responsibility on earth. So Enoch was like, Look, look at nature. Nature is doing what it's supposed to do. The earth is doing what it's supposed to do. The, 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 the waters are acting the way they're supposed to act. In the winter and summer, they come when they're supposed to, the, the, the trees and everything. But you got this group of angels that are rebelling. You also got a group of humans that are doing the same thing. Okay, I'm almost done. Please bear with me. 15 more minutes, if you can. If you can't, I understand. 
I know it's getting late, but 15 or less minutes. I just want to finish this. Uh, I want to get to verse 10. We're on verse or chapter 10. We're on ver chapter 8. But you see, these, these chapters are really small. It says, And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to go unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's who consume all the acquisitions of men. And when, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Okay, now we see these, these uh, watchers, these angels, they call them sons of God, Benai Elohim. They came into the dolls of men, but they also did some other things. They taught men charms, enchant enchantments. They taught them magic. They taught them witchcraft, the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. They taught them about the herbs, not, not, just, not necessarily just good stuff. They taught them about things that we shouldn't know about, like, uh, like tobacco, weed, and, and all types of uh, these drugs pharmacaea that we deal with these op opioids that are in nature but are not used for purposes that we should be using them for you know yah yah created the the uh, herbs and the plants for our healing but these watchers taught them how to use these things to destroy us go ahead ty You're on mute. Sorry, Joel. I, I hit that by accident. I'm doing a delivery. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. So it says they, they even begin to sin against beasts and birds. So this is a mixing of flesh. This I've already shown. I, I hope I don't have to. If you want to see it, is there someone that wants to see it? Raise their hand. But I've already showed some videos of um, chimeras is what they call them. Uh, animals and human hybrids that are being, scientists are doing right now, they're mixing the DNA of humans and uh, different animal species, mixing them together to form these different types of creatures in, in the name of uh for example growing a heart for out, out of out, out of a pig for imp uh, implants heart implants and things like that like for I, i'll show you one example i can't really look at these things too long because they're too sick but so i mean uh, like look at this pig look at this pig is growing an ear this is supposed to be like a human ear on the pig they did this in china the purpose of them doing this is, well, I, I should say, the reason they say the purpose is, is for medical reasons, but I don't care how sick I get. I do not want a pig heart. I do not want a ear from a pig. I don't want, I don't want nothing from any animal, to be honest, but especially an unclean one. Because you're opening yourself up to all different types of spiritual things as well as physical things. But I, I'll talk about that later because I want to get to the end of this. So they sin against the birds, beasts. This, so my point is this is not a new thing. This thing that these countries are doing, even America. There's an island here in New York where on the island they experiment. And, and people have found on Long Island, you know, the beach, Long Island, people have found all different types of creatures that have washed ashore on that beach because of all the experience, experiments that they have been doing. How do they know how to do all this? It's not that they were that smart. 
There were literally angels that came and gave hidden secrets and knowledge to elites, people that are running this planet. And therefore, we have things like um, these creatures that I just showed you. We have our water being poisoned. And it seems like there's certain people that just don't have any kind of conscience whatsoever. Uh, some of the things that we witnessed in slavery, how, like, how can, how is this even possible? The extent of evil that was done in some cases, like feeding children to alligators and things like that. You're going to see where all of this comes from. Humankind were taught these things. So let me see. Chapter eight. Okay. Is this eight? Yeah, eight. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates to make known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids all kinds of costly stones and all coloring uh tinctures and there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray it became corrupt in all their ways some jaza taught enchantments enchantments and root cuttings and amaros the resolving of enchantments so azazel he taught men how to make you know I, i'm sure you probably have wondered at some point in your life how do they how do we make all these metals out of these stones and how did we learn how to do all of this azazel he's another one of these angels so making swords these are weapons weapons came from them now one thing interesting about azazel that you may or may not know uh azazel is actually in the book of leviticus azazel i think he's in leviticus chapter i think 17. just got nine more minutes i know y'all gotta work Sorry, just nine more minutes. We'll be done. Um, uh, so, goat. So, some of you, I'm sure, know about Yom Kippur and the and the scapegoat. So the Yom Kippur was is also known as the Day of Atonement. Is the it, it was the holiest day, or it's a feast day, the holiest day on earth that the holiest person on earth, which was the high priest, could go into the holiest place on earth, which was the holies of holies. So on Yom Kippur, there was a special offering that was made. Verse, I'm sorry, this is Leviticus 16, Leviticus 16, not 17. It says, an Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house and he shall take the two goats and present them before the before yah at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats one lot for yah and the other for the scapegoat and aaron shall bring the goat upon which is yah's lot and offer him for a sin offering so this scapegoat which is offered as an offering is Azazel, the scapegoat is Azazel. Azazel is a fallen angel. So you may ask, well, why is it that Azazel is mentioned, or why, why is it that they were to have this goat and Azazel, it's, it's, it is it is it is Az, Azazel and the goat do the same thing escape goat and Azazel. Why is it that they they needed this thing? So if we go a little bit further. We see that 
in verse 20 says that when he have made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So all the sins will go into Azazel, this goat. They will confess their sins. The priest would lay and all the sins will be transferred to this goat. It's a picture of, you know, what Yahushua did for us. His sins, all of our sins were placed on him. But Enoch is giving us, when we get to chapter 10, it's going to give you why this, this happens. So, Azazel, you see, he's teaching all these things along with these other fallen angels. It says, Simjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Amaros, the resolving of enchantments. Barakiah taught astrology. So now we see where astrology comes from. See, astronomy is okay. You're studying the stars. But astrology is when you're assigning the stars as gods. We see the root of all of this. Uh, Cockabell, the constellations. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Arachiel, the signs of the earth. Shamiziel, the signs of the sun. Sariel, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried and their cry went up to heaven. See, it got so wicked that that Yah said, I repent. He said, I repent that I've made man. I'm going to destroy everybody and everything. This is a result of these fallen angels. Verse one, uh, verse one almost done. We're in chapter nine. We're just trying to get to chapter 10. And then Michael... We know about Michael. We just read about Michael and Daniel. Michael, Uriel, Raphael. These are also angels that are in the scriptures. And Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said one to another, the earth made without inhabitant cries, the voice of their crying up to the gates of the heaven. See, these are the top angels. They like archangels and they can hear what's going on and they're concerned because these angels are assigned over Israel, just like over Persia, just like over Persia. It has this angel and Greece has this angel and Rome has this angel and America. It has its angel. Israel has its angels and they are concerned. They're looking at all the lawlessness on the earth. They say one to another. It's actually, let me skip to verse three. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit crying, bring our cause before the most high. See that the righteous ones are crying because of all these things that are being done. And they said to the Lord of the ages, Lord of lords, God of gods, King of kings, and the God of the age ages, the throne of thy glory standeth unto all the generations of the ages ages and thy name holy and glorious and blessed unto all the ages thou hast made all things and power over all things that thou hast and all things are naked and open in thy sight and thou seest all things and nothing can hide itself from thee see see i love how the angels they te they're teaching us how we're supposed to pray praise how we're supposed to glorify and extol the most high they say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, thy is the kingdom, the glory and the power. This is what they do all day. This is a lesson for us what we should do. Verse 6, thou seest what Azazel hath done and who have taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven. This reminds me of Satan in the garden. Remember, there was a tree of knowledge of good and of evil. It was knowledge that man was not supposed to have. They were secrets of the most high. And so now all these secrets that are only reserved for Yah because he's the only one that knows how to handle it. He's the only one that knows how to deal with that. Now all the earth is flooded with all these secrets. You want to know why it's so evil, why it's so wicked? It's because we have knowledge that we should not have. It started with our father, Adam, and now it's just keep on going. We as human have given these angels the right and authority to come and and wreak havoc 
and they're doing it through us, but they're giving us the information and the knowledge. We're going to get to all this stuff maybe next week. But verse, let me keep reading. Verse 7. And Samajah, to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates, they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and have slept with the women and have defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sins. See, these sins were revealed. And now behold, the souls of those who have cried or who have died are crying and making their suit to the gates of heaven. And their lamentations have ascended and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on earth. And thou knowest all things before they come to pass. And thou seest the, these things and thou dost suffer them. And thou dost not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these. Now the last chapter because we're not going to get to nothing else. This is the last thing. Chapter 10. Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spake, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech. Lamech is Noah's father. And said to him, go to Noah and tell him my name. Hide thyself. Ooh, we read that earlier. I didn't even realize that was there. <laughs> Remember, Psalm 91. Isaiah, hide thyself for a moment. Psalm 91, he who's in the secret place. Oh, my goodness. Now I'm understanding. Yah is good. Y'all could only understand. I don't be knowing what I'm going to talk to y'all about. I don't be knowing at all. I was asking y'all before this. I said, please, you got to bring this all together because you're giving me so much information. Please. He just did it right there, right there. He told Noah, hide thyself. Hide thyself. Separate yourself, Noah. Don't be like everybody else. Hide yourself. Spend your time with me, Noah. Abide in me. Because I got some things I'm going to tell you, some things that are actually going to save all of humanity, because through you and your sons are all the nations going to come, because I'm getting rid of everybody else. So hide yourself. Wow. So Uriel's giving this message. It says, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all generations of the world. And again, the Lord said to Raphael, bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into darkness and make an opening in the desert, which is Dudadel, and cast him therein. And place him upon rough and jagged rocks and cover him with darkness and let him abide there forever and cover his face that he may not see light. And on the day of great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire. Does this remind you of anybody? Reminds me of somebody. It reminds me of the tribes. I see done. A Satan. Oh, the one before. The one before remind me of the tribes. Sorry, it reminds <laughs> me. Yeah. Let Revelation 19. It says. Um, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Which he deceived them that had the mark of the beast and them that worshiped the image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So we see the beast and the false prophet are going to be cast into this lake that is burns with fire. Also, um, we're also going to see Satan cast. Um, I think it's in the next chapter, Revelation. 20 or 21. Um, I think chapter 20. So Satan bound. Here it is. So 
saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chains in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So the Satan's going to get bound for a thousand years and cast into the bottomless pit and shut up and set a seal upon him. So what we just read is that Azazel is going to be bind, bound, bind Azazel, hand and foot. He's cast in the outer darkness, and he's going to go in the desert, which is Dudadel, and cast their him their uh, cast him there in. Um, and it says, "Let him abide there forever, and cover his face that he may not see the light. And on the day of great judgment, he shall be cast into fire." So, what does Revelation twenty say? It says, uh, "He's cast into the bottomless pit, which is dark." That he should be not deceived to deceive the nations anymore to the thousand years were fulfilled. And after that, he's loosed for a little season. And then at the end of that, he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. After he's freed, it says after the thousand years, Satan should be loosed out of the prison. He's going to deceive the nations. Uh, and then the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Now look at this. The book of Enoch written before Noah saying what Revelation says. And they wanted to keep this book away from us. Okay, almost done. I'm sorry, it's 1035. I'm almost done with this. I'm not going to finish the whole chapter. I just want to read the last part, this last scripture, and we're done. Last scripture. It says, And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted. So the angels are going to be, or, or the or earth's going to be healed. God's going to make sure all this gets take, taken care of, all this corruption, and proclaim the healing of the earth, and that, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secrets things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons and the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel to him ascribe look at this to him ascribe all sin remember in Leviticus Azazel and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and remember that that scapegoat, Azazel, that's in our 66 books. With that, I'm going to end because it's past my time. I got so much more to go over. We'll see what we can get to next week. Next week. Um, I'm going to pray. And then if someone has a comment or question, we get in because I want people to be able to go. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for revealing these things to us. You are so good. I thank you for not hiding these things. The, the, the blinders are being lifted up. You said in your word, you, you said uh, that you were going to blind Israel in part. We surely have been blinded in part. I thank you that you're taking those blinders off. You're revealing to us the truth. Um, so that we can be ready, we can be prepared for what's coming. I also thank you, Father, for these prayer requests. I thank you for the testimonies that we're going to have. We got so many people that are in agreement, and we, we know what your word says, Father, so we thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you, for Father, that your word will come to pass. We thank you that uh, you're going to heal, you're going to bring to pass, you're going to bring deliverance, and you're going to do it for your name's sake. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pastor. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. In Yahushua's name we pray. Amen. 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 If you need to go, you can go. If you have your comments, I'll stay on a few more minutes. But I just want to give everybody an opportunity to leave if they need to leave. I caught the very I caught the very end of it, but it sounded like an awesome Bible study. Sure, you'd be blessed too. Oh yeah. Yes. Good night. Good night. Have a blessed evening. So, I think they're gonna start boarding our planes, so I'll probably leave. So I have battery. I love you guys, though. Yeah, I love you too.
Bye, yeah. Bye, Ty. I'm still here. The Jolies. I assume so. I thought he said he was going to stay on for a few. He was going to keep going. Oh, well. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, bye. I guess we're going to play on you. Hello? Okay, I guess everybody left. Sorry about that. <laughs>